Hi guys. So, I wanted to just do a quick video because I was sitting here thinking about this royal wedding and and uh, some of the symbolism that the Lord has used not only in my dreams, but in many others' dreams that I've seen um, about animals um, like the unicorn and Obama has been um, shown symbolically together in dreams and um, the four-leaf clover and the shamrock <clears throat> um, I've had dreams and even a song given in my spirit crimson and clover and um, a dream about uh, people or kids mounting on horses and they're dressed in the 4-H colors. They were 4-H kids. Um, now, if this has double meaning, I don't know. But it was interesting when I typed in the coat of arms here. Because when I was watching the wedding and they zoomed in on Harry and William's collar on their, their military coats or their royal coats, it showed a shamrock on their neck. And I was like, hold on a minute here. <laughs> so I went digging here, guys. And the royal coat of arms is a lion, a unicorn. There is a United Kingdom one and a Scottish one. Because remember, their, their family lineage is Ireland, Scotland, and United Kingdom. And Australia. They also, um, the courts and everything down there is, is British. And that's why I had dreams about Australia and others have had dreams about Australia being attacked because that is, uh, I mean, there's, um, cities down there named after Victorian Queens, Victoria, Adelaide, or Adelaide. Um, yeah. So this is what I found. It was kind of like, wow. Um, you got the lion down there. A golden lion and a silver unicorn. There's a Tudor... In the compartments, there's a Tudor rose, a shamrock, and a thistle. Order of the garter. I don't know what that means, but... Okay, so it goes on to explain about all the quarters, what it depicts. <coughs> Uh, for Scotland, they have a harp for Ireland, a lion for England. Um, the crest is a st statent garden lion wearing the St. Edward Edward's crown. Um, the Dexter supporter is likewise crowned English lion and the sinister a U Scottish unicorn. According to legend, a free unicorn was considered a very dangerous beast. Therefore, the heraldic unicorn is shown chained, as were both supporting unicorns in the royal coat of arms of Scotland. All right, so they look at the unicorn as a beast and it's chained up. <clears throat> um, in the greenery, there's a thistle, a Tudor rose, and a shamrock depicted, representing Scotland, England, and Ireland, respectively. Um, and then there's the motto says, shame on he who thinks evil. So that was a little bit weird. More symbolisms. Um, in Northern Ireland, the Royal arms cannot be displayed in courtrooms or on courthouse exteriors. They can be displayed in Belfast, Downpatrick, different places. Um, there was something here I was reading too. I'll leave the link and you can just go through it. Windsor Castle. Uh, there's the one that's displayed at St. Michael's Parish Church, the arms of the Hanoverians. Um, 
lion. It goes, it talks about the Scottish one now. Let's see. The thistles is Scotland's national flower. Man, I hate those things. And here's something interesting. Um, upon the ascension of the Tudor monarchs who were themselves of Welsh descent, a Welsh dragon was used as a supporter on the royal arms. This was dropped by their successors, the Scottish House of Stuart, who replaced the Tudors' dragon supporter with the Scottish unicorn. So that's really interesting. It was replaced the dragon with the unicorn, which I still think, I don't know, that still might be something still connect. They're still connected to the dragon with all these dreams with Obama and the unicorn and it, um, it's an eye opener. Okay. I had to switch the video here. Now we have the three hairs, you guys. Or the three rabbits. People have been dreaming about rabbits. Three rabbits. Um, and we all think down the rabbit hole. And I think, yes, that's true. Um, I, I had a dream that uh, this rabbit was trying to attack me in the street. It was chasing after me, trying to attack me. And my husband that was there uh, was putting a new door on my my house it was a nice freshly painted white door and um, I grabbed this rake and was trying to bop this rabbit on the head from getting me and then my husband came over and just leaned over grabbed it by the neck and said and I said it was trying to get me and he just laughed he was just like oh my goodness it's this thing it ain't gonna hurt you and my husband was representing the Lord and um, this rabbit symbolizes uh, a lot of things. And I'm going to read what I found here. <clears throat> the three hares, or three rabbits, is a circular motif or meme appearing in sacred sites from the mid Middle and Far East to the churches of Devon, England, as the Tenors' rabbits and historical synagogues in Europe. It is used as an architectural ornament, a religious symbol, and in other modern works of art, or a logo of adornment, including tattoos, jewelry, coat of arms on the es escutcheon. It is viewed as a puzzle, a topology problem, uh, yada, yada, yada. Renders as a sculpture, drawing, or painting. The symbol is three hares or rabbits chasing each other in a circle, like the tris triskelion, the tri Ketra and their antecedents, that is the triple spiral, the symbol of the three hairs has a threefold rational symmetry. Each of the ears is shared by two hairs, so that only three ears are shown. Although its meaning is apparently not explained in contemporary written sources from any of the medieval cultures where it is found, it is thought to have a range of symbolic or mystical associations with fertility and the lunar cycle. When used in Christian churches, it is presumed to be a symbol of the Trinity. Now, none of this is used in a real Christian church, you guys. We know that the world thinks that Catholics are the Christians, when, except when I was younger. Nobody called Catholics Christians. They were called Catholics. But somehow the Catholic Church has become uh, being called Christian. So... Uh, Okay, it appears in Christianity. Okay, the motif, see they're calling it Christianity. And the motif of the three hairs is used in a number of medieval European churches, particularly in France. In the Basilica of Notre Dame. In Lyon. L-Y-O-N. And Germany. Okay, Q Germany. What's going on with Germany right now? She just made a alliance with Putin. Shaking hands. He's bringing her uh, bouquets of white white roses and swooning over each other and um, Germany selling tanks to Turkey um, and they're called leopard tanks it's just crazy what's going on right now 
Um, it occurs with the greatest frequency in the churches of Devon, England. The motif appears in illuminated manuscripts. Illuminated manuscripts. Wow. Architectural wood carving, stone carving, window tracery, stained glass. Um, goes on to talk, talk about ceilings of medieval churches in Dartmoor. Um, the motif occurs in central placement in synagogues. Um, is on the ossuary that by tradition contain the bows of, bones of St. Lazarus. Um, it appears in England in a prominent place in the church as a, such as the central rib of the chancel roof or on a central rib of the nave. This suggests that the symbol held significance to the church and cast doubt on the theory that they may have been a mason's or carpenter's signature marks. Sure, I like I believe that. Firstly, it was widely believed that the hair was hermaphrodite and could reproduce without loss of virginity. This led to the, an association with the Virgin Mary with hair sometimes occurring in illuminated manuscripts and northern European paintings of the Virgin and Christ Child. The other Christian association may have been with the Holy Trinity, representing the one and three and three and one, which is interlocking shapes and all that. In many locations, the three hairs are positioned adjacent to the green man. Here comes this green again and the, the shamrock in Ireland, a symbol commonly believed to be associated with the count, continuance of Anglo-Saxon or Celtic paganism. These juxtapositions may have been created to imply the contrast of the divine with man's sinful earthly nature. And guess what? It's in Judaism, you guys. In Judaism, the Shafan in Hebrew has symbolic meaning. Although rabbits are listed as a non-kosher animal in the Bible, they at least arguably chew their cud, lacking cloven hooves. Rabbits, rabbits can carry very positive symbolic connotations like lions and eagles. 16th century German scholar Rabbi Yosef Haim Yerushalami saw the rabbits as a symbol of the Jewish diaspora. The replica of the Ch Chodoro synagogue from Poland. Here's Poland. Remember my husband had a dream. He was fighting a war in Poland. On display at the Museum of the Jewish Diaspora in Tel Aviv has a ceiling with a large central painting which depicts a double-headed eagle holds two brown rabbits in its claws without harming them. Then painting, the painting is surrounded by a citation from the end of Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy 32.11. This may be translated as, As an eagle that stirreth up her nest, hovereth over her young, spreadeth abroad her wings, taketh them, beareth them on her pinions. Thus is God to the Jewish people. Um, this is something the ancient German riddle. It says, Three hairs sharing three ears, yet every one of them has two. So if that's an ancient Jewish, or sorry, German riddle, and these are all over the churches and synagogues, and, you know, and on the coat of arms, it means the same thing. Um, this curious graphic riddle can be found in all of the famous wooden synagogues from the period of the 17th and 18th century in the Ashken... Ashkenaz region in Germany that are on museum display in Beth something, I don't know, Tel Aviv, the Jewish Museum, Berlin, and the Israel Museum in Jerusalem. They also appear in the synagogue from Horb Am Nakar, donated to the Israel Museum. The three animals adorn the wooden panels of the prayer room from Unterlimperg near Schwabisch Hall, which may be seen in replica in the Jewish Museum, Berlin. So they're seen all around. Um, here we find depictions of three kinds of animals, all organized in circles, eagles, fishes, and hares. These three represent the Kabbalistic elements of the world, earth, water, fire, and heavens. And we don't follow Kabbalah or Kabbalistic. That's satanic. 
We don't read nothing that like that. It's like reading Enoch. Reading the book of Enoch, the Kabbalah, any of that. Not only do they appear among floral and animal ornaments, but they are often in a distinguished location directly above the Torah Ark, the place where the Holy Scriptures repose. Is this for real? Is this for real, you guys? <laughs> it's like, uh, they appear on headstones in Sataniv, something oblast, Klimanesky oblast, and western Ukraine. This is just crazy, you guys. So now we got the hairs. We understand what the hairs mean. What the rabbits mean. Um, it's just, it's crazy. Uh, the unicorn with Obama. All this stuff on the, the crest. The coat of arms. The, the shamrock. Um, it's just crazy, you guys. And you know what? God's going to come and burn this. He's going to give people a second chance. And then he's going to burn this world up. We got uh, Queen Bay and her church being worshipped as God. Like the Queen of Heaven. Um, people making cakes to the Queen of Heaven is what it is. It's just blasphemy. It's disgusting. And... Um, you know, the rabbit hole goes down so... I mean, the Lord even said, um, it, it is even here now. The Antichrist is, is here now. Or the system is even starting now. You know, as, I, as I'm here. As I'm walking. And you can just see that these Illuminatis or Freemasons or... or whatever they are, the order of this or the order of that, they've been here and they've just evolved through all these the millennia and they've put their work and their, their worship into all these buildings and synagogues and and uh, when Jesus was on earth, it was already there he was preaching against it he was preaching against these these people and even the Pharisees that thought, oh, well, we have the Torah. We are following the law. It, the law of God that gave to Moses. We are following all these laws. We are not a part of the, you know, whatever was going on back at the rabbit, the hair, the this, that, the queen of heaven. We don't make cakes to the queen of heaven. So we're holy. And Jesus was saying, no, you're actually not. You're not. You're not holy. All have fallen short and missed the mark. And I am he that was prophesied. Uh, I am the prophesied Messiah. And, and you know, following the law and burning, you know, sacrifices on the altar. Um, okay, I'm going to give you an easy way out here. Because you're made without sin by doing that, but you're not made righteous. You're still have fallen short of God's glory. And here I am. I, I, I'm going to die on the cross for you. Woohoo! I'm going to take all your sins away and I'm going to put your sins into remission. That's what he said. For the remission of all sins. And remission means uh, there's no more sin. Like when you have cancer, your cancer goes into remission. It, it's been in remission all this time. That's our sins. Even if our flesh keeps on sinning, it, it, in Jesus' eyes, if you believe upon him, and you, and like he was telling the Pharisees, believe that I am he, you know. Believe. Believe in me. God so loved the world, he, he gave his only begotten son in order that whoever believes upon him would not perish but have everlasting life. It's just the gospel so simple, you guys. And, and the Lord has given us a back door. He gives you a back door. He says, run out this back door and run to me. And I will give you life. You see? And even these, even these Jewish people and these Greek peoples were worshiping their gods. And the Jewish peoples was worshiping their gods. And they had all these crazy rogue manuscripts like Enoch... You know, and like, <laughs> this is crazy. And Jesus comes on the scene and says, hey, check it out. 
I'm the lamb. I'm the lamb. Believe upon me and I will forgive your sins and you will have everlasting life. Just like he told the thief on the cross. It's as simple as that, you guys. He said, today you'll be with me in paradise. He didn't do nothing special. He didn't do anything special, but acknowledge that Jesus had done nothing wrong. He was acknowledging in his heart and, and Jesus knew that. And he said, today you will be with me in paradise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for your mercy and your love. All right, you guys, I love you.